Hello, hello, hello. This is the Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are back with another episode, and I am very excited, very honored to have this beautiful, talented young lady on my couch here tonight on Private Talk. Welcome, Paloma Ford. What's up, you guys? Hello, Alexis. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you so much for being nice. here. Thank you for having me. How are you doing tonight? I am. I'm vibing. I'm good. I'm excited. vibing. I like to hear that. So I here at Private here. Talk Podcast, it's a new podcast. It's a, a way for me to talk to people to make you feel comfortable, feel this is like the private place that you can talk to, feel like we're homies. But we're not homies now, but by the end of this session, we're going to be homies be. for sure. So thank you so much for being here. Let my private talk um, <laughs> listeners out there, let them know who you are. Let them know your background. Let them know what you're all about, Miss Paloma Ford. What's up, guys? This is Paloma. I am a musician from Long Beach, California. What, what? Yeah. So, you know, I'm a native here and getting ready to drop some new music. That's exciting. Yes. So when are you going to drop it? What is it? Is it by yourself solo? Or are you featuring somebody? Tell us what it's all about. Yes, it's um, it's my second project. Uh, we are going to drop the first single December 1st. So be looking for Chasing Waterfalls. All right, guys. Yeah. You heard it here. So long. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah. So Private Talk Podcast, you heard that first. It's going to be releasing. So how does that feel? This is your second project. Yes. Is it more exciting than the first? Like, tell us how you how how are you feeling right now? Because it hasn't released yet. Are you in those nerves? Are you like passionate I'm yourself? All like, the way in those nerves. <laughs> um, it's been going on three years since my first project. Um, I've featured on other things since then, but this will be, um, yeah, my first release in, in quite some time. So I'm very, very nervous. And compared to the first one, um, I feel like I'm more nervous because, you know, you set the bar and then people are like, wait, they want more. And, you know, and then time goes by. So they're like, Hey, what's what, that? what does that sound like? Paloma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, it's one of those things that you have to be your your own fan. And I feel like, you know, we're all artists in our own ways and you've worked so hard on all these things. And I know yeah. it's going to be great. It's going to be a hit. And yeah. I'm excited for you to. It's like a, a second birth of a baby. Like it's yes. like it's, it's you put so much work and passion into you, like your craft. And it's like it's you don't know where it's going to go. Right. But the only way it's going to go is up for sure. So with that being said, like, where did you get your start from? Um, as far as music goes, the the first time I ever did something um, on, a, on a major level was I was doing backgrounds for Macy Gray. So that was kind of my introduction to the industry. Um, I was like... 18 years old 19 was that intimidating were you just like all in because it's a gamble with you know the art the industry you know you don't know you just like I was just so naive to the industry so I was just kind of like happy to be there at that time you know um she was working with everybody from like Justin Timberlake to Will I Am so they were in the studio every night with us and like I said yeah I was just happy to be there I had no idea you know what steps that I would take next to. or yeah exactly so, so you doing all this stuff you're you're an independent artist you're yeah. not with a label like how does that feel and what is the differences do you like being independent do you want to be signed to a label like what is the feelings and you know things that you go through all the nervous stuff is it what how do you feel about all those things I love being independent um I kind of fell into it on accident um but once I saw you know just how much I, I like having control because I know everything that I want to put out, you know, content wise, um, visually, sonically. So like I said, my first project, I kind of fell into it. Um, it was it was just me trying something out and I really, really like it. And now I'm unofficially hopefully going to be signing to myself Awesome. Um, for my new project and That's exciting. Um, partnering up. Yes, thank you. That's a big thing. Yes. I, 
I love women that, you know, we're, we're entrepreneurs. This is a, yeah. you know, time where it's female empowerment and doing those things. That's a big step for, you know, signing with nobody to signing to yourself. Like, yeah. tell us a little bit more about that. Like, what are the steps with that's going on? Well, I've been really, really patient with this project. I started recording two years ago. I mean, really, like, after kind of the end of me putting my first project out, you know, I was I was constantly recording. So it's been a long time coming. And um, just me being a businesswoman and, you know, always trying to learn, I kind of like saw what things I lacked, you know, in the first project and why, you know, songs only reached a certain limit and, you know, what things I would need to do to really, you know, step it up for the next time. And, and part of that was just like having a really strong team. And so I, I kind of just promised myself, like, I know the music that I make deserves to be supported in a certain way. And, um, so I, I was very, very patient and just waited until I found, you know, the people to kind of put the, puzzle together Pieces together yeah and that's like you know that's a hard thing to find people that it were cohesively you all work yes. together your idea comes across in the way that you want it to exactly. because being an artist you know people don't understand what that means they know what it, se it seems like from the outside looking in but right. you know the hard work that we put on whatever industry you know yeah. mine included yours included sure. the things it's like you know it's a creative and exactly. it's, it comes from a, a place of where you may not know where it, where that is blossoming to but it's so much like who you become as a person and where that transpires. Like with exactly. you, and, you know, with music, it's like how you said, you've strategically made your decision and, and that's really big to not just sign a deal with the label or not right. do this, whatever, and continue to be independent because right. a lot of people just, you know, come into the quick money or the quick yeah. this because... And whatever. the independent route is very difficult. Like... It's but not, the hard work pays off, you does. know what I mean? And myself included. Yes. I'm an entrepreneur and, yeah. you know, I'm an independent contractor and I've always had my own say in my own business. Yeah. And so there's steps along those ways that you feel like, man, is this the right idea, whatever. And sometimes right, it is exactly. and sometimes it's not. But the only way you're going to know is if you try, try it out. Yeah. And, you know, so congratulations Thank to you. you making those steps and, like, mm -hmm. you're going to sign yourself. That sounds weird to some people, but that's such a big honor to, like, do those. And, like, I, you know, that's, it's that's amazing. It's more a dream come true. That's really awesome. Yeah. Yes, girl. Okay. <laughs> so what other projects do you have going on besides, you know, your, your new single coming out, you know, in a, in a month or so? Yes, um, I am working on an independent film. Um, it's called G-Code. It's an L.A.-based film um, written by Meg the OG. Shout out to Meg. Um, she's also somebody that interviewed me in some podcasts in the past and we kind of stayed in touch and she had, um she wrote the script and reached out to me and I was like let's do it so was that the first film you've ever done before no or I've been in I've done very very small parts in a few other independent films so this one is like a lead role and awesome. um, we've kind of been like working on it and I've been helping her produce it as well so that's pretty exciting that's something that I'm working on that's really cool do you see yourself doing more of that kind of stuff like acting stuff and yes, going more of that absolutely. route more behind the scenes or in front of the camera how do you know I, I, I definitely want to get more heavily into acting in the upcoming year for you sure. being from you know LA is that something that you just saw and you always wanted to be that or did it just kind of come and like you said fell into your lap and you kind of just like hey now I want to do this no I always wanted to you always wanted to yeah. what was like the first thing you saw that you were like you knew you're like no I can do this and I want to do it too um I mean just from an early age I was watching Michael Jackson like obsessively and I never I thought that it was kind of normal because it was like me and my cousins and we would watch Michael all the time moon you're watching them watch the all, videos everything yeah, yeah, like dance everything moves. and like I said I always thought that was normal until I, I have a son and he is like so completely uninterested in that and so I was like okay well this you know it makes sense now your passions of it shows true colors of what you right. really want to younger. yeah and you just don't identify with it until later on exactly so you say Michael what other influences have you had throughout your career to make you be who exactly who you are today Sade for sure um she's probably like Michael was first Sade was next because that was somebody that my mom always played in our house <laughs> and 
um, so singing Michael and Janet songs, if, if you listen to, you know, the way they sing, Sade has like a very similar tone, um, to Janet more so, but, uh, yeah, so Sade would be next. And then, and then as I got into like junior high, Tupac was like a super huge influence too. What would you say to this day that's been your biggest, you know, piece of work that you're proud of that you've like put out there? You said you've, you know, obviously we were, we know that number two is going to be there too, but what from, you know, the first, and if it's been with your first body work or people mm-hmm. that you've worked with that you just stand out that you know it's your number one? Um, definitely my song called Wet. It's probably, probably my biggest song. And, um, I, I will say I have two songs. I have Wet and then I have the song called Jada, but Wet was like start and finish by me um, with my producer. And it kind of took a life of its own, not only in uh, the streaming and music world, but in dance. And I never thought that it would go that or, route. Or whatever. Yeah, I never saw that happening when I made it because it's so s- slow. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I would definitely say. All right. So with that being said, like, how did that make you feel when it finally like when that and it's like, again, it takes you by storm. You never know what project because every project to us are like really intimate to us and you never know which one. And, you know, we like others here or there. But when that happened and like it started going by storm and it was dancing and this, like, how did that make you feel? Like, do you feel because especially being from L.A., you know, it's very kind of normal. You probably have a lot of friends and this or whatever. Like, how did that make you feel inside of like finally be like, man, that's that's mine. We're listening to my shit. I'm going to be honest with you because of the pressure that I put on myself. I felt like with my first project, I never really celebrated myself or, or time to like stop and like realize, you know, what I had accomplished on my own. So, um, I can't really answer that for real, but that's something that I'm definitely more aware of for this project. And I've, you know, I've done, this project like really on my own Mm -hmm. um and I have a really heavy hand in in writing um even more so than my first project so I'm definitely going to like try to take those moments that's awesome well I'm looking forward to listening to it I'm sure my listeners out there at the private talk podcast are listening to it as well I hope you guys are subscribing liking I hope you guys are enjoying our conversation I appreciate you for being here and your honesty and just letting my listeners know a little bit more about you so thank you Paloma thank you you. I hope they I hope you're feeling comfortable with me you know again we're just we're meeting each other but I feel like it's it's uh, one of those things that we're in such a, an industry now where social media and all these things where there's so many similarities but so many polar opposites of each other of right. like what your fan base, what all these things are going on. So it's like you hear names but you haven't like met somebody. Right. So the fact that like I love this opportunity to sit here and like have you on my couch and just getting to know who you really are yeah. and like getting your side of you know, who you are. Right. So let everybody out there at Private Talk know where we can follow you, where we can hear your single coming out, where could they go to if you have a website. Let okay. us know all about that. Yes, so all of my social handles is my name, Paloma Ford. Um, You can find all my music on iTunes and anywhere you can find music. It's available on all platforms. Um, And yeah, that's about it. Everything is at Paloma Ford. All right, guys, you heard her. You better go over there and follow her and listen to her shit because I have a feeling this is going to be a hot one. Number it's two bomb. is like, you know, I, my lucky number is two. So I, you know, I'm a big about energy. I'm a big about like believing in all those like energy and things yes. like that. So I have a feeling this yeah. is going to be a big one. So I can't wait for you and you. to do all those things. So with all of that being said, we have your music coming out. You're doing, yes. you know, you're a, a major player in this big movie role if you had to pick between one of the two what would you do I mean music is 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 without question um that's just kind of like I always have music in my head so I think that if I ever abandon it I would probably go crazy so there are certain things that you just can't ever run over want to run away from you know right. what I mean it just stays true to you yeah that's why I, when when I see artists say like I quit music I'm like no you don't I feel the same way in my, my even if you just did it for yourself at home you're never quitting music so don't be so dramatic 
I feel the same way in my industry. There's so many people that said, oh, I retire, and then they come back a month later. It's like, why even say that if you're not going to do it? Right. Just, Just say live you in, take a break. Live in your truth or don't yeah. say anything. You know, or don't people, say anything. Exactly. People get so caught up in the social media world they feel like the they aspect have they have to. to say something that I'm just like, you know what? If you need to take a break, just take a break. Right. No one needs an explanation. No, no one needs a, like anything no, like that. Nobody deserves it. All of those being yeah. said. So with that segue being said, like, you know, we are in very opposite industries, as I said, but I feel like I have this one thing where people have fake profiles set up and they're like me, like myself, and they try to emulate my my persona, my brand, yeah. and they speak for you. And a lot of fans, and regardless if you speak about it loudly and you make a, a video about it or whatever, they still tell you and they're in the comments like, hey, why did you do this to me? Like, why did you da 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 da? And like, you feel like, man, like I already have, I've done so many things to make you feel not that way and right. be like, no, hey, this is the real me. Right. Is Do you have that same issue for in sure. your industry as well? For sure. You know, um, I'm an overall, like, just private person, and um, I'm not, like, super loud. I'm very laid back. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people will take that and and make it to be anything else but that but when you meet me in person I'm like the sweetest person because I really love people I love humans I love you know giving and 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 you know just being and so yeah I, mean, I identify with that because I feel like as much as like in certain like social media aspects you want it like less is more but the less that you say sometimes the more like like curiosity and ideas that people already formed in their head are like already about you that they think that you're doing sure. like you're escorting or you're doing like something that called Google Hangouts. I don't even have one, but people apparently say that I speak to them on like all these platforms that you're just like, if you don't, and you're not a true fan of me and I've already said all these things, like how do you not know what's real or not? Right. Like, do you have people approach you like that? And how do you handle that? Or do you just ignore it? Cause it's one of those things that you could do, all three. It's a it's a big <laughs> a big spectrum. Um, for the most part, I ignore it. You know, some days some days I have a little. You, feel you a know, little better now. Feel, yeah. Some days I have time, and you know, I might let a motherfucker know. But um, for the most part, I just ignore that shit because you know, like we just said, like at the end of the day, as real as social media, you know, is to people it's really not real so you know unless you know that person personally it's like I can't really get mad at you you don't know you me. don't know anything but that's yeah. usually what I've also too when you chime in is when they're like oh but I love you I just wanted you to say something to me so that's why for me again I ignore most of the time but exactly. you, know, you have those day twos but that's also why for me I've never really spoken out a lot of times is because it can get be misconstrued a lot of ways and, and that's they will, why no matter for what. me is why this is all about with private talk is about I wanted to have you know, the control of my conversation and right. what my truth really is and know that there's right. way more to me than just what Alexis Texas is. Just because what I chose to do at one point doesn't define me as a person. It's just right. a part of who I am, but there's right. so much more to me and that's what I want my listeners and everyone to out there to really like feel and appeal with everyone and see that as we go on with every show. So I, I fuck feel, with that. Oh, yes. Let's applause us. <laughs> So I have a question with you. It's um, so you're from LA, but you moved out when you were younger to Ohio, I yes. believe, right? Correct? Yes, correct. So how old were you when you moved to Ohio? Um, so my mother got remarried, and she moved in elementary school. Um, but you were very young. I was very young, um, and then I, but my father still lived here, so I kind of did the back and forth thing for like a while. summers and kind of things. Or yeah. Like well, no, I came back out here and went to school for a couple years as well. Okay, so you were back and forth all the time. Yeah, I was back and forth and then um I finished high school in Ohio because I at the end of the day like I just needed to be with my mom. Um but I was back in LA by 17. So me being from Texas and knowing LA is completely different. How was yeah. the change from going back from Ohio to LA even though you went back and forth like how did you adapt to each situation and like how does it affect you now as who you are lot. as a person? Yeah. Um well, I was living in a suburb outside of Columbus, and um, it was predominantly white. Um, and even though my mother's white, I was like one of the blackest things there. You just look different you than know? people. They don't yeah. understand it. Because anybody that just out of the norm, people are going to be like, question it. And for me, it was extra weird because I came from L.A. where we didn't know 
color at all what was different yeah you know so when I came out there I was just as shocked as they were I was like wait I'm different like I didn't you know understand did you vocalize it. to that as a kid did you get in fights because of yeah it? I got into I got into it a lot with people um because even you know there was white kids at my school in LA but like nobody cared about at, what it cared was about it and looked at it that way so even though I was going to school with white kids I was like this is this is still relatively normal you yes. know to me I until was until they young. open their mouth yeah, because it's geographically, it's just certain things, you know, if it's because of how we're taught or what it is, it's like, it's, you know, it's not right. You know, people say things that are like kids are the worst things on the playgrounds. And what you say, whatever, it's like, it's very impactful to who yeah, we are and like, sure. you know, how we move. And for you being in both situations, like you just said, going from white kids in Ohio and then white kids in L.A. and them not saying anything because you're just who you are. Right. And then it's like, hey, like, why are you even questioning? Because I look, you know, it's yeah. different, like. Did it you, was, so was you, when you went to Ohio, was it always just like discipline? Like you got, because you got into fights to defend yourself. Did you ever like get to your place where, Hey, they knew who you were and they accepted who you were? It, because well, some people, it's all about change too. Like you have to learn to, adapt I was to always, it. the thing was, it wasn't like I was like an outcast. Like I was always popular. I, I played sports, but you're a beautiful girl who stands out. Like regardless. So they of, were just, yeah, they were like, just, you just, just, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you're, you're going to stand out in a room regardless, like especially Thank in you. Ohio. Like I, right. you know <laughs> I mean, like I dance all over the world. And when you go into certain places and even being from a small town, it's like, right. you stick out like a sore thumb for sure you know what I mean and, and yeah. you can't help it you're just you and that's yeah. why it's like how do I be me without you being an asshole but, like, but <laughs> when I came back to LA I mean I dealt with the same thing you know like I I dealt with racism on both sides so that was definitely an interesting thing for me but um I'm just I'm and I'm thankful for it like I've always been like super level-headed you know so I kind of like get into my feelings a second because I'm like questioning like why are people like this and then I just I guess I'm always so much in my own world that it never like doesn't really matter yeah it didn't like deeply scar yeah, me yeah, yeah. you it's know like, like, it, it, it's in it's on your like you know there but it's not like really matters yeah I was just like okay they're stupid they're stupid you know like I never I yeah I never took anything too much to heart unless it was like coming from somebody personally like I said that I knew then that's when yeah. so you saying you came back to LA 17 so did you immediately jump into the music game did you just like did you already have a group of friends because you came back and forth that you just like rock with like, yeah were no, they, I, were I they had, musically talented like where did when you came back at 17 where did what was your place in LA I did have um my friends from junior high out here that um I stayed in contact with but I really made a whole new group of friends when I moved back. Um, I went to like one semester of college because my parents made me, and then I dropped out and I moved out. What'd you go to parents, school for? Music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprise. Um, it's in your blood. It's like, hey, hey, if that's what your truth it's is, just tell all it I <laughs> ever knew that I wanted to do. But yeah, I, I I dropped out, moved out, and then like six months after I dropped out of school was when I started working with Macy Gray. So I was like, okay. This, this is what it is. What it was supposed to be. Awesome. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. So thank you for being on my couch. I appreciate it. I love it. I like it. And um, I have a lot more questions for you. I hope you're ready for I'm me. I'm ready. So you coming from, you know, L.A. girl, obviously, it doesn't seem like well, even when you went to Ohio, you still repped L.A. I, I hear All that day. you're a, an L, L, <laughs> L.A. Lakers fan. I bleed gold and purple. I like that a lot. I like that. I'm a big sports <laughs> fan. I played basketball myself. Nice. Um, I played in junior college. I'm very competitive in those aspects. So, like, yes, I, I um I was a Spurs fan. Okay. Um, I can't I say was in the past tense, but I still watch them. Whatever. It's more like the team has very much changed since I you know First watched started. them and like the whole yeah, of since I've been in LA for over ten years. So yeah. it's very different to watch the Spurs. It's like they're playing the LA Lakers or the Clippers. So it's right. very different. Um, so being an LA Lakers fan. <laughs> explain that like does it change over the years you like did your your parents like teach you that you just like you knew growing up like you just you bleed yeah that was um that was something that that was like my bonding time with my father um he's like a man's man so there wasn't too many things that you know we They're could do I'm a daddy's girl I get it going into like I would say going into junior high so one thing that you know I just liked early on and because the games were always on so that was that became the thing that we would do together is watch the Laker game and then I just kind of you know 
had that in my head and, and just always, you know, it just becomes them. a part of your every day, like, yes. you know what I mean? Or every season. Cause it's not yes. every day. Yeah. So yes. 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 So it, what is, who is your favorite Laker player of all time? At- I mean, come on, Kobe Bryant, of course. Hey, I gotta hear it. I gotta ask it. Hey. But, <laughs> but I mean, oh, there's a but, there's there a is but. a but because Shaq is right behind him. Okay. Um, I used to love Nick Van Axel. I can really give you some names. Hey, but. I'm, not, I'm not a fan. I like it. I like it. That means to me, you know, that you're really a fan. And I, I think my private talk listeners are really going to appreciate it. I hope you guys are liking and subscribing and loving this conversation because yes. I know I am. Thank you for being here, Paloma Ford. Thank you. You are amazing. So tell me more about this Lakers stuff. Let me hear. Let me hear. Um, I'm just a basketball fan in general. I always have been. Um, I think that people don't really take it as serious as I do. When a, but I feel like they don't take it as serious when like a woman says it because they think we're just like, oh, right. you're just like a, a what do they call it? A, um, um, bandwagon fan. Oh, right. And I'm like, no. And then when you start saying names like that, I'm like, right. no, I really know what it is. No, like, I don't don't play is. with me. Yeah. Don't play with me. So how do you feel <laughs> with the new season? Everyone's a big raving about like the Lakers had, you know, Kobe left us. They did all these things. We've been in transition. Yeah. Now we have LeBron. Yeah. We've, but we're still, we've lost two games. Like, how do you feel about that? Let me hear it. <laughs> Don't be shy. This is a private talk with Alexis Texas. Is feel comfortable? No, let I'm, me hear it. Girl. No, let I'm, me hear it. I'm super excited about this season. I was at the game last night, um, so you know, shout out to the Lakers always. Yeah, Lake Show, baby. <laughs> but um, you, you know, the Clippers are looking real tough too, and I really like that. I've never been a big Clippers fan. Yeah, hey, I'm a Spurs fan. Kawhi left us a long time ago, and he went to the Clippers, so yes. I'm excited. I haven't been to a Clippers game yet, but I definitely want to go because I feel the same way. Yeah, it's like for me, it hasn't been about like teams for a while. It's about players and individuals. Players. Like yeah. what makes me feel like excited about the game, and yeah. that's what it is. And that's to me, I'm like, mm, you gotta run for your money. But I'm I'm excited for both the teams actually. Yeah, I'm loyal to the soil, so you know it's always Lakers right. first. But um, I'm a big I'm a big fan of a lot of the guys on the Clippers team, and I think that they you know have a lot of heart, and I love watching players you know that played the way they play. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm just happy. And I want the truth. <laughs> you said, uh, yeah, like that's the segue of like, mm, I want to say something, but I'm not. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, I'm excited for LA in general because we got the Rams, you know, and they're a really strong team. And, you know, we at Lakers, you know, we, we kind of went through a, a drought. Oh, for sure. That's why I said so, it's, it's, a, it's a transition still. But that's why yeah. it's still like where it's a work in progress. And we got a lot of pride, you know, because we are the Lakers. LA. So it's it's nice to see two strong teams, you know, playing right now. So I have a question for you. I know. How does you how do you feel like whenever if you've ever dated like players and things like that, do you have to stop watching them completely? Because I feel like sometimes <laughs> when I've dated certain people, I'm like, I have to stop fucking with everything you do completely because it's just not okay. So you've dated someone from the Lakers at one point. How yes. did you feel? How did did you like how did you feel? Are you still watching? You're just like he definitely <laughs> Yeah, he definitely ruined the rest of the season for me. That was hard. I was like, yo, I'm never dating anybody from the Lakers again because if you guys stop me from watching my team, like I can't have that. So um I feel uh, but you. That's real. No, I feel you because I've I've done it only one time in the music industry, and I was like, I can't even listen to anything you say. Like, right now, I'm mad. Like so now I don't. I, right. I, and then I have, they come on the radio every time you get in the car. Yeah, and then it's every like time. or yeah, no, you have to <laughs> no next. Yeah, I right. can't do it. So, yeah, guys out there, you ruin it for some of us. Yeah, thanks you a should, lot. You should do better. You should. All right, guys. I hope you guys are <laughs> loving this conversation with us at Private Talk. Make sure you subscribe and like. I hope you guys are loving this information that we're giving you. So I have a question for you. Sure. What would you give advice to a, a younger woman in the industry if you had to give them advice right now? Like at the beginning point of their, their being an artist in the industry in L.A.? I get, it's a tough world out here. Like we're women, you know, like you're an independent, you're not with a label and you know, I, you know, it's kind of like you're on your own. You don't really know who's right, who's wrong. You could you give maybe some tips to someone t- being new in the industry and knowing where to go from there? I get asked this question all the time and 
you know, my answer kind of changes sometimes. But um, right now, I would say if you choose to be in this crazy industry and that's just where your heart is set, um, learn your craft, um, learn your business, um, just be a master at your craft and your business. And the more you can do for yourself, the better you know, chances or not even chances, but the better opportunities, um, I feel like will come and, um, you know, you have to continue believing in yourself when nobody else will, because nobody's going to believe in you at first. You got to be your biggest fan. Cause who yes. else is going to be? So that would be my, that's advice. awesome. So right now, currently, who is your favorite male and female artist? Ooh, my favorite male and female artist oh my gosh like new new anyone like who are you still listening to right now like whatever like whatever's current for you because everybody's playlist is different as we all know um I love Summer Walker all right I think that that's a really strong project um I've been following her since her first project I think she's really really dope so um shout out to Summer Walker I think she's really dope um male Jeez, who do I listen to? I li- <laughs> who do I listen to? <laughs> um, okay, so I listen to a lot of hip hop. Um, I love Young Thug. I love his new project. Um, who else? Shit. It's like when they throw you under the bus, you're like, man. Damn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then all the homies are going to call, like, for real, my nigga. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but on the R&B side, I'm, like, a big fan of Brent Fayez, Sonder, Division, um, all the mood music, because that's what I make. So um, listening to them keeps me inspired. Yeah. I know I'm missing somebody, like, real important right now. Well, if now. it comes back to you, I, you're still, you're so. not leaving my couch right now. We can still shout them out, but yeah. I, I, it'll come to you, I promise. Yes. So who have you not worked with that you want to maybe work with in the future? Do you have someone, like, do you have, a, like, a, a vision board of things? Like, tell us about that. Mm-hmm. I or do you don't. just kind of go, like, project to project? You just kind of, like, see what vibes with certain, yeah. in, like, artists? Like, how, yeah. do, how does that process work? Because I definitely, you know... I love music. I'm an appreciator of music, but I don't know how the process of how that all works as being, uh, you know, an artist like yourself. You know what? For me, um, I think, like you said, I think everybody is different. Um, for me, I don't have a dream board. So I think it just kind of like it varies from project to project and just who I'm inspired by. Um I would love to work with Brent Fiaz. I think he's just super, super dope. Um, on my playlist, yeah. Yeah, I love him. Um, I really want to work with Party Next Door. He's a friend of mine. Um, I think that, too, because I know so many people, um, you know, sometimes you, like, become friends with people and you forget, like, no, this is somebody that I'd actually, like, that love That it's business, to. too. Yeah. Um, so, but mine definitely varies from like song to song and project to project well I'm a believer in speaking it out there in existence so I hope all of those things come true because it's gonna happen thank you I like it so we're about to get (laughs) to truth with Miss Texas but I wanted to touch on something too before we get to that you said earlier that you have a child I do I want how old is your kid you said a son yes yes how old 10 so how does that affect you you're being like juggling being in the industry having a love life having all these things like does that how does that work with being like all that's the chaos of what the you know music industry is about um I've definitely gotten to a point of a lot more balance in the last couple years but um I mean my son has been with me my entire career so it was a huge struggle at first. Um, I was doing, I mean, just, I can't, I can't even like remember or put myself in that space. Like I would never do that now. You know what I mean? You just survive. It's like a survival mode at that time. Survival mode for sure. Um, you know, like getting him to school, getting to the studio, 
you know, leaving the studio at two, three in the morning, waking up, taking him to school. Like it was a lot. Um, I, I definitely have a lot more help now. My brother is around, <clears throat> but, um, it is something where you have to time manage, um, love life. <laughs> it's, it's a little, it's a lack thereof. So does that mean um, that you're, you're single? I'm single as a Pringle baby. Hey. Um, but you know, like I'd be dating and, but with all that, let's just say, so dating Having like your kid, yeah. you know, having to deal with all like all the activities that kids do, yeah. and then like you know, especially ten because now you're yeah. like doing like sports stuff. and this and yeah, that, whatever you know. Um, is that a struggle? Is it something that like um, that you still make time for, mm-hmm. or like how do you find even just dating in general? Do you date just in your industry? Because myself, I can't just go on a dating app and be like, hey, I'm gonna date somebody because they're like, right. hey, but are you? Or they yeah. think it's a fake, and yeah. then it's like a whole other thing, and then it's, yeah. You don't want I mean, them looking at your Wikipedia, looking at your info. You want to like be genuine for sure. Um, when I when I do date, <laughs> uh, it's yeah, it's usually in my industry just because, like you said, it's like something in common that we share. And I and you know you you don't have to kind of wonder. I mean, it's always it's still a wonder, but it's less of a wonder of like why are you talking to me right now you know because you kind of like you vibe with it because it's something that you already are doing yourself exactly i could understand that all right are you ready with truth with miss texas yes ma'am all right let's do it all right i'm gonna shuffle these cards you're gonna pick every one of these cards but each card that you pick whatever symbol it is we're gonna ask you a question on each category what that is all right are you ready for miss texas i think so don't be nervous i won't bite you i promise (laughs) okay Right, Ace of Hearts. Ooh, see, we started light. That's to my romantic question. All right. So is there a certain song that if you want to set the mood and do whatever that you listen to for your go-to, like, love-making song? Mm-hmm. And what is it? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I haven't made love in a while. All right. At uh, whatever like, past no, time in your life, we still... No. I want the truth! <laughs> I was going to say good sex mood music is definitely like I like party always sets the vibe for sure. Um I see a twinkle in your eye. Look, you, you said that. That means that there's a, there's a song like there's a, like music to me is about like <laughs> memories. So it's like there's always songs that you're like, oh, yeah, I did that that one time. And, like, and then sometimes it's like, man, I did that that one time. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the guys. Some of the guys. <laughs> uh, Feel free. It's just an open conversation. Private talk listeners want to know. <laughs> no, I was just going to say. What guys? Come on. You know, in my past, tend to be a little ratchet. So they might play some future. <laughs> but if it is up to me, <laughs> that's why I laughed. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> I like the honesty. I love it. So it's like their ratchet playlist and you're... Yeah, I'm like, I'm like the smooth, like, yeah, baby. Smooth list. operator. I like it. Yeah. Gets you a little bit more than anything. Future doesn't get you a lot. You just know what you're getting with future. They want to just pop that pussy. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're ready to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Are you ready for the next question? I am. All right, let's go. Ooh. Oh, you got a club, girlfriend. A club. That's my kinky question. <laughs> okay, kinky question. I love how you're nervous. You look away from me. You're like, oh, man, what is she going to ask me? <laughs> what? What is she going to ask me? All right, so my kinky question. <laughs> Do you sleep naked? Mm. Sometimes. Sometimes. What does that matter? If you're sleeping with somebody in the bed <laughs> or is just like how you feel that night? Are you? Definitely how I feel that night. Um, I probably sleep not as naked as I would I'm a very naked person but I have a son you know and he likes to pop in my room at you know anytime in the morning so. curious at 10 I can understand oh yeah like I used to yeah I used to be you know naked around him all the time but he's 10 now obviously so um I don't and yeah so I probably would sleep naked a lot more if I had the privacy. So if you're not naked, what are you wearing? Mm. 
Definitely some panties and a t-shirt. Like booty shorts, thong, just like, what are we talking about? We're definitely talking about thongs, you know, some... See, this is where my pervertedness comes out, so I apologize, but I just... My listeners want to know. Yes. Private podcast. We want to know. Okay, I'll tell you. I like it. Tell me it all. So are you ready for the next one? Yes. All right, let's go. Got a... Ooh, my favorite, the Ace of Spades. That's my naughty question because it's just like my booty and we're just going to get naughty with you. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Have you ever used a toy during sexual intercourse? Yes. Which kind of toy? You know, just like a little vibrator. They're just... Just a little vibrator? Just a little vibrator. Does that intimidate? Did that intimidate your partner, or is it something that you like had to like talk him into doing? Because most men sometimes are like, "Why do you need that toy?" I'm like, "Come on, trust me, it'll be better for the both of us." I've mostly only done it with my boyfriends, so um, you know, I wouldn't even be in a relationship with somebody that I couldn't like be completely Open and honest. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, private talk podcast. Are you guys ready? This is the last question, Miss With. <laughs> Are you ready? It's hot in here. Ooh, I like it getting hot in here. It's a little spicy. Last one. Here we go. Last one. Got the All diamonds. right, my diamonds. It's my spicy question. So, what's the craziest place that you have ever had sex? Craziest place. Be honest. Um, Don't lie to my listeners. Private Talk wants to know. I've done it in the movie theaters. <laughs> That was tricky. Was it was it a full theater? Was there not a lot of people? Was it during the day? It was a full theater. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it wasn't full as in like full of people. It was it was at night. So it was definitely had the opportunity for a lot of people, but it wasn't. And I've done it on the side of the freeway. And that was just kind of scary. I don't know why. Were you parked in a car on the side of the freeway? And why? Just because of the thrill? Um, was it in the back seat? Did you hop on the driver's seat? Tell us. I probably hopped on. <laughs> probably. Come we, on now. I want the truth. You say probably, which means that's a 90% chance that's a correct yes. Yeah. We were just talking too much shit to each other. So like, so it um, was like a passive aggressive, like, no, you won't do it. I'll do it. And then you're just like, fine. And he pulled over and you're like, okay. And you did it. Exactly. You like to be challenged. I don't like to be challenged. Because you like to win. Because I like to win. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with that. I'm a Leo. I'm a Gemini, so I can understand. Yeah. But hey, there's nothing wrong with winning. Yeah, I don't don't like to be challenged, actually, at all, because I am very competitive, so... I, don't I think like, women competitors is the best, especially in, in, in industries like our own, is because that's what's going to make you excel and yeah. make a difference between anybody else. I agree. So thank you so much for being thank a guest you. with me, Paloma. I appreciated you being honest, open with me. Thank you for coming on the Private Talk podcast. And um, yeah, thank you so much. If there's anything you want to shout out or tell the listeners, let us know. No, but I would like to say congrats to you on your new journey. And I hope that this is everything and more that you dreamed of um, because I think it's really dope you know I feel like we're the same as far as just you know continuing to find new avenues to express yourself and and show your artistry so congrats to you thank you I appreciate that and I love that and a female empowerment is the way to go so thank you and I guys I can't wait for you guys to listen to her new single make sure you follow her and um, yes let's see what's next for number two All right, guys, thank you for listening to the Private Talk podcast. I hope you guys loved it, liked it, did all those things. Make sure you subscribe and you like to this channel. And um, can't wait for the next guest. Let's do this Private Talk podcast.